Hey everybody, welcome to episode 6 of the Blueprints to C++ programming series. Today we are covering the TSET basics. Similar to last episode's T-Array basics, this will be a short video. So let's have a look at the outline. So we are having a look at comparison between what is available in Blueprints for T-Sets and what will be the C++ functions to call. And then we are going over the iteration types of a T-set and then have a recap of the T-set. Okay, so let's have a look, a small example to show you what functionalities are available for a set. So the set is more limited than the array. It doesn't have some functions the array has, like for example, a get function. So there is no possibility or direct access based on an index. But this is or has a reason because the T set is a set of key values, of unique values. And the point is that you have these sets where you can quickly search through the set and iterate through and have access to these values. But I will show you this once we get to the iteration part and where like the two array function also makes sense or is important for that. But let us go through what is available. So we have add, add items, length, contains, to array, remove, remove items and clear. These are the basic functions that are necessary for your all time or all day use for sets. There are some special ones like union and intersect and so on, but these are specific for operations with several sets and so on. So I will not cover these, but one thing that I might have not mentioned in the last episode with T-Array is that the same with the set, there are some special blueprint function libraries for these. So when you hover over a node, you can see target is blueprint set library. And this means like there's no direct access to the set, but it's adding or accessing function calls from that function library. Let's have a look at code to clarify this more. So here we are in the set actor class, which is similar like the array actor from last time. It has a T set, VEC set, and we are just showcasing all the functionalities, all the function calls in this class. So, but first let's have a look at the blueprint set library. Cause there are some functions like we have with remove items. There's no direct call in C++ like we have with append and add, which we Let's have a look at the blueprint set library. For example, remove items. This is what is usually called. It's a blueprint callable. It's called add items. It's the same node that you're calling in blueprints. But then for these libraries, these are just wrapper functions for the specific generic set. So if we, let's have a look at the functions. So you can see like you have these exec function set, and then there are the generic ones. And the generic ones are the ones with the specific implementation. Like what you can see, we have add, clear, contains, remove, length. That's the ones that I've highlighted here. The others, if we go back again, like I mentioned, intersect, difference, these are union, these are special functions that you can use for intersecting two sets or make a union out of two sets and so on. So, but we are not covering these. So if we look at the generic implementation for that, the set add or add items, you can see like it's these wrapper functions that have a generic type of access. And so it has these script helper structs to use. And you can see for the add items, it just calls the generic set add function in that loop. This as a side note, if you're seeing like these function, these library target is blueprint set library. So if we have a look at the set library, there are some others, but you might be wondering where is the array? Sometimes it's called, it's you blueprint or you Kismet, like the Kismet array library. And then there you have some other stuff like text libraries, string libraries, and so on. So it's either you Kismet or a you blueprint library. But this as a side note. So let's have a look at the function calls for our functions here. So for add, we have, we have the set defined, we add a vector, 
we add another vector because it's unique values. If we would add another vector with the same element or the same vector again, then it will not be added because it's a unique set. Then what we can do is we can append a set to an existing one or an existing one to another set. And we can also create an array, T array, and append this to the set. And this is not directly possible in blueprints. So these are some simple functionalities that in blueprints, if you see what all this is doing, it's so much nicer in C++. Then we have the num. So it's very similar to the T array, but there are things that are not possible or that are missing. Like for example, there's no access. If you do this, you don't see an error, but it doesn't compile because the access operator is private to this element and so on. So because that's obvious, it's the nature of the set that you don't have access based on indexes. Then the only way you can do this, and this is also what we, when we come down to the iteration, the set has a two array or array me method, which gets you a new T array back with the elements in from the set. And then you can access that array based on that in index. So this was get num elements and then find contains. Contains is similar like in the T array where we just call contains and get the bool back. Find is a little bit different. And this I have to explain. Where in T array, you got like the index back because we don't have indexes, we get the key back or because everything is a key value in in a set, so we get that value back as a pointer. So if you call find with the vector, you get a specific pointer back to the key in the set, which here is declared as const vector pointer. And if you want to access it, then you just do the standard pointer operation, but you can also dereference it to get a normal vector back and you put that star in front of it. This is the find version in the set compared to the T array where you got the index back. Then we have remove. And like I mentioned in the beginning, there is no remove items like here. So what we would need to do is iterate over it and remove every item or just call empty to clear everything or whatever. So these are the functions that are available for a T set in C++. And let's have a look at iteration. In blueprints, what usually is done, there's no other way to iterate over set. You need to get the array and then iterate over the array like you used to with a normal T array. And the same with a for each loop or standard for loop. There's no way in blueprints, at least that I know of, that you can iterate over a set. You always need to get the array and then iterate over it. In C++, if you want index-based access, then of course you need to do the same thing. So we are getting the array, getting the number of items, and then iterating over it. But then there is a range base for loop which accesses the set. So you can actually iterate without getting the array and iterating over it like you're used to in blueprints. You can just use the range-based for loop iterating over the set. And the same thing with auto, like we covered with the T-array, so we could actually specify the value type or use auto. And then you also have the iteration possibilities to create an iterator or const iterator, the same thing like we did in with the T-array. And that's basically it. So let's recap. So here we have the blueprint C++ function comparisons. And I can see here, remove items is not available that you have to do with iteration or just call clear and empty it. Then standard for loop with array. The only possibility, like I mentioned with the indexed access is getting an array and then iterating over it. Then we have the range based for loop and the iterator possibility. And as a recap for the most important functions that you can find in the slides, which I will also make available again on my GitHub account. 
So this was a real short one again. So these are really short videos covering TRA, TSET and the next episode TMAP. But these are real important collection classes that you will be using in daily programming when you're programming with Unreal. So it's important to cover these. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you want to get notified when new videos are coming out, so please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about this episode, about previous episodes, just leave the questions in the comments and I gladly answer them. So the next video, like I mentioned, will be about T-maps. So see you again in the next video. Until then, bye bye.